Hi, so uh, we're ready to start our second talk of the, uh, for this session. Uh, it will be about compression of quantum multiproof and interactive proof by uh, Zheng Feng. Thank you. Um, so yes, I talked about uh, compression of uh, quantum multiproof and interactive proofs. Um, and I'll start with uh, my last slide from last year's QIP, where uh, I proved uh, Kermit harness for, for uh, entangled uh, entang games. And in, in the last question, open problem that I ask is whether we can go beyond Kermit. And actually, this will be the uh, um, central topic of, of today's talk. So the overview of the talk is first we discuss the motivations and, and some background of, of this uh, topic. And then uh, we briefly uh, um, give you some ideas of the main steps of the proof. Uh, and then uh, I, uh, I've spent about 10 minutes to uh, give you some of the more details in, in, in techniques and in, in proof. Um, and then we uh, briefly conclude. So basically, we are uh, interested in knowing how hard are non-local games. And this has been a problem that have, has been puzzled us for a long time. Um, even though I guess it's fair to say that we, we even after this talk, uh, the problem is still unsolved. But we have uh, something interesting uh, to tell you. Um, this is a class that we, we don't even know how to show that it's decidable, even with some uh, uh, precision that, that you can tolerate. Um, so there is always a possibility that uh, it becomes harder and harder, and, and we will see that it's happening uh, in this talk. So what are non-local games? These are a very simple model, uh, which uh, has connections to uh, bare inequalities, and also in computer science, we uh, talk about uh, multi-proven tech proofs. Basically, you will have uh, a verifier talking to multiple provers who can share entanglement and do measurements on their systems. And the verifier will sample a distribution uh, pi over the uh, question sets and, and send uh, questions to Alice and Bob. Um, then uh, the verifier will receive answers back from the, from the players. And, and there will be a, a function v defining uh, the probability that the verifier will accept or not, uh, based on the questions and answer pair. Um, the, the important uh, uh, value of uh, the thin is so-called non-local value, which is um, the optimal winning probability, uh, the, the optimal acceptance probability of the, of the referee. And um, um, when, we, when we talk about the non-local game problem, we are, we are uh, asking how hard it is to approximate this value to uh, inverse polynomial precision. You can consider other approximating problems, but uh, in this talk, we are focusing on uh, inverse polynomial uh, approximation problem. Um, and um, our title is about uh, quantum multiprover interactive proofs, but most of the time, we were talking about non-local games. They are essentially the same thing, but the main difference is the, the, the message size are uh, uh, very different. In, in non-local games, the message size are usually log of uh, the problem size, but in, in multiple interact proofs, we will have uh, uh, polynomially uh, long uh, bit strings. So, um, but there are other uh, subtle differences. For example, uh, in games, we are more concrete, and, and for uh, interact proofs, this is for language, and once you uh, select a problem in a language, there will be a concrete game. But, but that's uh, uh, not that important. The important thing is that message size is different, um, and we, we call it a compression of, of interactive proofs because we are transforming this um, interactive proof with polynomial size length message to, to non hook gain with log uh, size message. So this is what we showed uh, last year. We give a uh, four-player particle for local component problem. Um, and therefore, it's uh, non hook games are, are extremely hard. Um, the basic technique that uh, we use is um, proving rigidity for um, um, some games uh, based on quantum uh, error correction codes so that we have the ability to encode uh, quantum witness state. And at the same time, we can command the, the, the players. We can, we can regulate their, their uh, measurements. Um, and this is uh, nice because we finally proved uh, quantum complexity for uh, this quantum game. But there's also a, a dark cloud hanging over our, over our head um, because in, for classical games, we know that they are NP-hard, and, and it's an NP, so the problem solved. We know exactly it's, it's an NP-complete problem. But there's no problem uh, known for the uh, uh, non-local games. Um, and 
so Kerma it might not be the right answer for, for the um, complexity of these games, and, and we'll see that it indeed is the case. Um, this comes to our uh, slide for the last year and, and, and the problem that whether we can go beyond uh, the Kerma hardness. So if you think about the uh, problem that, that uh, complexity classes that, that, that are harder than QMA, um, you, these are uh, natural classes that, that, that I can find. Uh, the QMA2, you, you somehow put a, a separability uh, condition on, on the witness, and it's containing QMA, and we don't know much uh, how hard it is. But yeah, maybe you can prove that uh, non-local games are QMA2 hard. This is a, a problem that I asked in, in, in the QMA hard uh, paper. Um, and uh, maybe you can prove that uh, it's PP or, or QAM hard. Or uh, as in this talk, I, I, will, I will show you that it's at least uh, P-space hard. But when you, when you go up uh, the, the, this tree, um, it, it, you're, you're feeling more uncertain because um, classical games and, and classical interactive proofs, they have uh, MP and NXP uh, complexity respectively. So it, could it be that uh, quantum games is already NXP hard? Um, this is really uh, uh, un unbelievable, um, or, or even that you can uh, come to the top of the of the tree and, and seeing that uh, uh, non-local games are QMIP star are uh, hard. Um, but um, as it turns out that um, the techniques that we will show you in this talk uh, for, for P-space hardness would, would automatically give you uh, QMIP star hardness. So basically it's um, all you can uh, have. The problem is we don't know how hard is QMIP star, but yeah, we, at least we have some uh, uh, like, uh, correct answer to this, to this problem. Um, so um, the outline of proof is uh, we use some uh, good old ideas from uh, um, the analysis of quantum proofs, including QMA and, and uh, uh, the, nine, the, the, the single prover case uh, QIP and and, and of course, the rigidity results recent developed in, uh, in multi-prover uh, case. Um, so we will use P-space as an intermediate goal to illustrate our ideas. But if you think about the problem, it's still uh, very challenging. And um, how can you prove uh, P-space hardness for this uh, small size uh, games? Um, but you might change your mind if I tell you that uh, there's a uh, uh, class called QMAM, which alternatively characterizes uh, P-space. So, uh, you have heard of QMA, which is a quantum analog for MP. You have a, a, a set of uh, uh, quantum bits, and you can verify whether it's uh, a proof of, of uh, some statement or not. And for this QMAM, which is introduced uh, uh, by Merritt and Borchers, um, you, you would have a similar structure, but now uh, there will be interaction. Um, so Merlin will send the first half of the proof. It's not the complete uh, set of proof. And then uh, um, after would flip a random uh, bit, and uh, without looking at the first part of proof, and Merlin then send the second half. Um, he, he may uh, rotate the, the, the second half of the qubit before sending, um, then also uh, decide uh, whether to accept or not. So this gives you uh, a quantum uh, characterization of P-space, and the good thing is that it's very similar to QMA. If you, if you uh, want it, it's really uh, QMA modified. Um, and and we know, uh, by uh, Woman's theorem, um, the, the the two proofs that uh, uh, also may receive, depending on, on, the, on the random bit, there will be a, a, a local unitary um, difference on, on the second part of the proof. So if there's the B is 1, then the Merlin would apply a, a transformation W, and otherwise that nothing is done. Um, so this is uh, uh, what, what we know. And, and um, so you may, you, may, you may wonder about whether we are done, because it's so, so similar to the uh, uh, QME uh, proof, and maybe we can use our previous proof for QME to, to show that uh, uh, non-local games are QME AM hard, then P space hard. Um, so I, I will uh, remind you uh, how we proved QME hardness. We would encode this uh, uh, n qubit uh, quantum witness proof using uh, some simple quantum error correcting code, and then uh, you would have, for example, you have for two two code. The, the, um, and you would uh, distribute the proof into um, four provers, each holding one of the uh, encoded uh, qubits from, for each qubit. Um, 
So the more technical uh, thing that uh, if you want to carry out this idea is um, in addition to this rigidity that you enforce this measurement of x and z, you would now have to apply, uh, you have to some uh, other rigidity result that you can enforce that uh, the, you ask the, the players to, to first uh, apply the unitary w and then measure, right? This is the only other ingredient that we need in, in this uh, uh, extension to QM AM. Um, but then there's this pro uh, problem because after the encoding, um, you have distributed the proof among the proofers and they are not commuting, so uh, how can they apply this uh, unitary? Um, um, if, if you think about the problem, essentially you are, you're asking uh, the proofers to, to choose the code so that you can, they, they, can, they can do uh, transversal universal quantum computation on, on data. And, and we know for a long time that this is impossible. Um, so this becomes the main challenge actually for, for our uh, uh, proof to go through. And because of this problem, even uh, honest uh, uh, prover won't be uh, able to follow the protocol, uh, first apply in the W and then uh, do some measurement. Um, so there are two ideas that we can uh, fix this problem. One is actually if you look harder on uh, what is this proof of paralyzing quantum uh, interaction proof to three rounds, three, three messages, the, 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 the prover side is actually a classical computation. Now you wonder whether you can have uh, uh, universal and transversal uh, case set uh, for a classically uh, reversible universal uh, computation. And I don't find any. I guess it's uh, answer is no. Um, so now left uh, with other solution is whether we can uh, um, do the thing without any encoding. Um, but our previous uh, construction uh, depend very heavily on, on, on the uh, error creating code structure. Um, so we have to invent uh, some uh, new, con a new, new set of games so that uh, we can achieve rigidity without um, encoding in, in, in the error correcting sense. Um, so three steps uh, of, of the overall, uh, overall, overall proof. So the first, we would uh, design some problem that, that plays the role of local computing problem for QMA. And this is essentially the, um, you, you, you would uh, consider a, a, a history state of, of the uh, uh, interaction for QRP3. Um, and and um, in this history state, I, I use U uh, as, as um, gates in, in this uh, interaction, including V1, V2, and this W. Um, so now we would have to do two things. First, we would, we would need to uh, check that, that um, uh, the verifier propagation is correct. Um, and, and this is uh, kind of easy uh, uh, using some uh, similar techniques cl uh, proving the Clifford local Hamiltonian problem uh, as Fon told you. Um, and then the second part is, is more uh, interesting that we have to make sure that um, the propagation at the prover step is correct. Um, uh, for this, we would, we would uh, use an uh, so-called extended EPR game that we will introduce later. The next step, we would um, uh, uh, end up with uh, uh, extended the local game from this honest player setting, um, using rigidity for, for uh, uh, a game that we introduced called constraint propagation game. In the last step, we remove, uh, so ext in extended analytical game, the, the verifier has some quantum miss. And, and we, we, in the last step, we remove this uh, requirement on the verifier side by delegating the computation to some extra uh, proofers. Right. So. Um, this is the overall structure that we proved that games are PSP hard, and I said that it's almost trivial to generalize it to um, uh, QMIP star uh, hardness. Uh, it is based on a technique that um, uh, these people, uh, Kempei, Kobayashi, Mashimoto, Vedic, uh, uh, generalizes this QRP3 idea to the multi prover setting. Um, so we, we would finally would prove that non local games are uh, QMIP star complete. Um, and, and therefore, it's uh, NXP hard because uh, uh, the, of, of the breakthrough result of uh, um, E2 and Vedic uh, proving containment of NXP in uh, MIP star. Um, so, um, if you notice that uh, classical games are NP hard, then we are proving that um, non local games are probably harder than classical games because NP is not equal to NXP. Um, and also, we provide some strong indication that. Um, the approximation problem for the non-local value um, 
and there's interesting trade-off between the complexity of this thing. Classically, um, because of PCP theorem, uh, inverse polynomial approximation and constant approximation is the same hardness, but quantumly we prove that it's not the case. Um, okay, so um, the techniques that uh, we use um, is basically the, um, the idea of using extended non-local games instead of non-local games to uh, prove rigidity. Um, so basic idea is you want to um, you force the, the players to, to um, do the measurement you first you do it itself. Um, um, so the power of extended non-local games um, allow us to um, both to prove uh, um, the requirement that we want rigidity without encoding um, and, and the um, checking the prover propagation using this extended EPR games. So what are these extended non-local games? These are uh, generalization of non-local games um, introduced by uh, Johnston, uh, Mito, Russell, and Watchers very recently. Um, so in non-local games, we have uh, uh, question set, answers, answer sets, and distributions, and a verifier that specifies the acceptance rule of the reference, which is a mapping of the uh, uh, simple probability distribution. Um, and then this extended non-local game, it, the, the V is a function to these uh, operators uh, between zero and identity. Um, so you can think of it as, as, as a measurement that you can, you can perform. Um, so there's another equivalent view of this definition is you have uh, now the verifier has a quantum system, but the verifier doesn't choose uh, how uh, to initialize the state. The prover chooses the state, initialization of the state, but the verifier can do, do uh, measurement on, on the system before uh, making any decisions. Um, it, so in, in, when introducing this concept of extended local games, essentially a, a generalization and, 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 and it's considered in two, at least two players, but we found that the single player extended local games are already uh, very interesting and we will be uh, focusing on this. So in, in that case, we would have a verifier who uh, shares some state, the state is chosen by the prover and uh, the verifier do some measurement and, and one round interaction with the prover. So the first um, um, extended local game that we are considering is called the propagation game. And we'll, uh, so to define this propagation game, you would have a set of ref reflections, R1 to Rn, and also a sequence of uh, reflections uh, for each of the entry would be one of these uh, N reflections. Um, and then you uh, arrange this um, re sequence of re reflections on, on, on the chain. Um, basically, we think of this as a propagation of, of some computation and of the, any of the, of the, of the gates or uh, reflection. Um, and, and this propagation game uh, is, is an a extended local game where the referee has a, a quantum system um, whose size is determined by the number of time steps that you have. And essentially, you are checking whether the propagation is correct. So how do you check that the propagation is correct? Um, the, the verifier would randomly uh, choose an edge and do a measurement um, um, to see whether the system is in this edge or outside the edge. If the outside edge, accept automatically. If the in this edge, for example, it's two and three, um, then you measure x on, on this uh, two basis and, and you, uh, you can check whether um, the state on uh, time step two and time, time step three is related by uh, reflection R2. So somehow this is a uh, uh, non-local game version of um, propagation check in like QMA or history state constructions. Um, and then we can prove something about this uh, propagation game. Basically, uh, if you can consider this uh, um, definition of history state, then uh, if you want to win this game with optimal probability, which is one, then you have to choose a history state. And then we would also introduce uh, a slightly uh, more complicated version of this game called the uh, constraint propagation game. Um, in, to define this, we will have, uh, uh, again, reflections and a set of uh, constraints. So the constraints would be um, of this product form, whether the product is, is uh, identity or minus identity. Um, so from these constraints, you, um, you, you extract a sequence um, by taking the um, reflections from C1 and C2 and so on, and, and um, this gives you a propagation chain. And then you also consider a constraint chain where um, 
Um, for example, if C1 is the accumulator of R2 and R1, then you would have uh, uh, this uh, blue chain con con connecting 0 and 4. You, you, essentially, what you're you are checking is whether uh, the state at time 0 and time 4 are the same state after the propagation of R2, R1, R2, R1. So um, roughly, you would do two propagation games. And, and the idea is that you, you check the constraints are uh, correctly satisfied on the state. And then um, we can show that um, if, if, the, the, if the prover want to win uh, almost uh, uh, surely, then uh, the constraints have to be satisfied uh, approximately um, on, on the state that uh, the prover uh, chooses. Uh, but yeah, technically, we have to, you have to consider a state that initially at the time uh, step zero. Um, right, so, but to, to prove this multi-qubit multi rigidity uh, using this uh, previous two constructions, we have to uh, consider two uh, enhancements to the propagation <coughs> games and constraint propagation games. Um, so basically, you would um, uh, allow two uh, extensions. One is um, the so-called confusion questions uh, are uh, with, so you have to indices J and Q. Q is a subset of the qubits. J is one of the uh, uh, elements in, in, in this subset. Um, the idea is that you, uh, sometimes you want to ask uh, 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 a bunch of uh, uh, qubits, but only interested in measurement on, on one of the qubits. And this will help us to relate single measurement, qubit measurement to multi-qubit measurement. And then um, the other uh, extension is we want to uh, consider controlled propagations. Now, the uh, control qubit is on the very far side, and we have to make sure that um, there's a history state that um, um, propagating uh, according to this controlled uh, reflections. Um, this is um, a technical um, um, requirement that we need um, um, to prove this um, um, rigidity without using a, a concept called consistency. We don't have consistency anymore in this new construction, which is important in, in previous uh, construction in, in our creating codes. Um, and then uh, you did, with these two extensions, we are able to uh, prove uh, multi-qubit rigidity uh, for this uh, some sort of con constraint propagation game so that you can um, uh, command the um, provers to do constant wave poly measurements um, and, and um, up to some asymmetry. So this is uh, what we need. But um, some discussions of why we need it to uh, enhance our, our constraint uh, propagation game um, so th basically, the, the constraint propagation gain would give you approximate um, uh, constraint uh, on the state uh, in this form. Um, for example, you can, you can prove that um, uh, two uh, refle reflections are almost uh, approximately commuting or anti-commuting, which will give you much of the structure of the, of the operators. But unfortunately, it is not possible to um, um, prove rigidity only with this set of con uh, 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 conditions. And, and you would hear more about this uh, in, I guess it's also in this is QIP, uh, it's called overlapping qubits. <coughs> right, so in, in the uh, second use of this extended um, non-local game, we would uh, use it to check the propagation of, of the proof of step. So if you consider the, um, only the, the propagation of the um, Prover step, you would want to check whether the, the proof is of this form. Um, the zero, zero is uh, uh, the clock, and, and um, one is after the application of, of, of W. So basically, you want to check whether state is of this form. And uh, we would use the so called extended EPR game, um, where this uh, XX and ZZ are the stabilizer for the EPR. And uh, the, the, the first column would be uh, the verifies operators. So the verifier is uh, honest and can measure uh, x and z. And uh, for the other uh, uh, x and z, uh, we will translate it to 0 and 1 and send it to prover and ask uh, the prover to measure it for us. Um, and um, if you uh, take the product of x, z, x, and z, um, the first column would give you a minus identity. The second column, we don't um, know whether the prover would actually do uh, as the as we are uh, asking, but uh, at least for some uh, reflection, x, uh, x, some x, some z, and, and when, you, when you multiply them together, it will give you an anti-commuting uh, relation. Uh, 
on the proof of size. So from this, we, we, we know that you can prove rigidity. So this gives you us um, uh, uses some uh, well-known technique uh, that you can prove um, rigidity from the anti-commutivity condition. Um, and, and for this, or this argument to work, we, we somehow need a theory of uh, stabilizer uh, formalism with some noise, approximate stabilizers. Um, and and uh, basically what we are saying that um, if you do this game, then you can check this step. This step is actually um, the, the main step that uh, watchers use in, in this uh, QIP uh, parallelization to three messages. So somehow this is a, a non-local version of, of this uh, result. Um, so to conclude, uh, we have um, told you about uh, how to uh, compress uh, quantum multi-proof and tech proof to a non-local game with messages of log uh, bits. And we proved that it's uh, KMIP complete and NXP hard. Um, and the proof is a combination of several old ideas in um, basically the history state. Uh, actually, we use history state construction uh, twice. One in, in this um, um, history of, of QRP3, and the other is in the propagation games. Um, the second um, technique that is, we use is parallelization of quantum proofs. Um, and, and of course, we, we need rigidity of non-local games to, to complete our proof. Um, and I should mention that um, there is a recent breakthrough by uh, uh, William Sofster. Um, you will hear this as, as a planning talk in this uh, fr Friday morning, and it will be uh, telling you that uh, non-local games are uh, undecidable. But uh, the difference uh, between these two uh, results is that uh, the undecidability results are exact case. There's no uh, error that you can tolerate. And in our case, we tolerate uh, one over poly um, error. And, and we believe that um, the, when, you, when you have some error, you will be decidable. Um, so for open problems, um, now we know the hardness of uh, non-local games um, to, uh, 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 pro to inverse poly uh, approximation. So the question is, what, what the hardness for the constant precision approximation? And uh, as we uh, have told you that the, the um, trade-off between complexity and precision might be different in the quantum setting. So what, what are exactly the trade-off? And, uh, uh, um, and to, to completely resolve the hardness of these non-local games, we have to understand what, what is hardness of QMIP star. And, and we currently, we don't have any upbound on that. Uh, OK, thank you. OK, so um, any questions for uh, Zhang Feng? Hi. Uh, I think there's uh, a lot of new techniques. Just wonder if I want to compare your this year work with your previous year's work. So you're dealing with a new situation. Now you have uh, one more round in the interact proof. So, so I just wonder. Uh, what are the new techniques handle which part of the new feature? It's like adding one prover, uh, maybe adding one round, and you know, yeah, so what kind of technique you handle which part? Can you? I guess the mo most uh, challenging part is you have to uh, solve this transversality problem that we have because after the encoding, the provers cannot perform this. Um, um, Unitary that, that they want to apply on the second run. That you first in QIP3, you you first uh, give part of the proof, and then um, after the challenge from the from the verifier, you have to adaptively change in this uh, witness state. Um, but then, you, if you are encoding this thing, you won't be able to do that. And this is what we want to solve, and we introduced a lot of new ideas to do that. Okay. So basically, the transversality yeah. is the casing yeah. for, for your previous one to work, but now yeah, yeah. you don't have any control on the previous size unitary. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, okay, I have a question actually. Um, so you said in your last slide that you know the one of the important questions was to see the difference between the, con the, the constant uh, yeah. gap and the yeah. inverse poly gap. Yeah. Uh, so the very similar question happened in quantum PCP typically. So yeah, sure. if you would show, for example, that 
it's not the same complexity, is it? Uh, so because you said it's, yeah, very, it's related to like... I, th a, I think there are yeah. several different flavors of quantum PCP conjecture. And, and the one that we are uh, telling, talking about is, is basically in the framework of non-local games. Um, but the connection between this, you can also consider like uh, um, the QMA proof in, in a more uh, PCP uh, um, uh, flavor. Um, you have a bunch of quantum bits and, and um, qubits, and you want to um, uh, verify. Um, but then um, the connection between these two different uh, uh, versions are not known. Classically, they are equivalent, but quantumly, we don't know. So maybe there will be some uh, insight provided to um, this uh, other um, definitions, but we, we, we still don't know. OK. Yeah. Thanks. Any questions? Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.